working with and accepting the fact that I'm losing some of the concentration that I had over the retreat. But um, I definitely feel like I crossed kind of a threshold, and I don't know how long that will last mm -hmm. um, as far as what's, what's still going on in my practice to this point. And I'm wondering, I've been reading through the, the chapters that you have on, um, on the uh, Jhana Insight uh, uh, website. And I, I noticed I'm really thinking a lot about practicing at the level that I'm at. Mm -hmm. I'm really not trying to rush things or get too busy with um, kind of trying to push my, I, I mean, there's this clear threshold when, I, when concentration goes deeper, and I find myself a lot of times when I start getting bored at whatever state I'm at to really kind of narrow in the focus, and it seems like at least temporarily, um, through an act of will, I can get to a, kind of a, a deeper level of concentration. Mm -hmm. um, and it, is, it feels kind of forced, but it also seems to be somewhat effective a lot of times I'll drop out, but sometimes I'll stay. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, um, it seems like where I'm at, the I, I couldn't say exactly where it is, but the idea is to stay with the breath. I, I don't want to get to a point where I get great concentration, because I talked to somebody else who's been practicing for quite a bit longer than I have, where they feel like they can get excellent concentration, um, but their mindfulness isn't there. Mm -hmm. So suddenly they'll just drop out and they'll be lost in mind wandering. Yeah. So, one of the things you point out is really working on open-minded uh, or full-minded awareness. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And I notice that's dimmed a lot, so that it feels like my focus is more now. I'm not as aware of what thoughts are going on around me. Mm -hmm. And it's not the same as what you mentioned, where it's that idea that you know there's thoughts, but they're passing, mm -hmm. even though you have a lot of clarity because of the focus. It's more kind of a dullness in the periphery. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering... How, what, what are some good methods for keeping open-minded awareness, but also keeping appropriate amount of concentration on the breath so it's still the focal point and, the, mm -hmm. and still at the forefront? Um, <coughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of... Okay, well, think of, your, think of your mindful awareness as being a, a quantifiable substance. And so if there's less of it that is uh, dispersed to the periphery, then there should be more of it where it's focused and, and uh, try to make that be the case so that when you're focusing in like this you should you should uh, have that sense that it's a gathering together of, uh, of the power of your mindfulness so uh, the other thing is you remember I talked to you about expanding the scope of your meditation object to be your, if at some time uh, you, you know you're focusing in very very narrowly, and you find you're starting to lose the, the vividness and clarity as a result of it, make the scope larger, but try to be just as restrictive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could focus on your head and the whole torso and arm area, for example. Uh, and try to be as exclusive in that as you would be with just a small area of the tip of the nose, meaning that sensations other than the breath sensations and outside of that part of your body and of different sense modalities like hearing and so forth and thoughts, that they be just as excluded as when you were very, very sharply focused there. But now you are mindful your mindfulness is of a larger area, so it has to be fully present because if it isn't, it will quickly disperse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I have, I've been using that at the beginning of my practice mm -hmm. before I kind of pull it all in. Yeah. But so you, and you suggest that I do that any time in practice where I start to feel where the, it's, I'm getting too exclusive on the breath and maybe mm -hmm. kind of a bit dull as well? Any time you feel like that the main thing that you have to deal with in the moment is dullness, uh, subtle dullness, then that's a good practice that's appropriate for it. That's okay. uh, in, in the fifth stage, that's mostly what you're concerned with, is subtle dullness. And so you might use that kind of practice very frequently there. But no matter where you are, whenever uh, the other problems are, when the primary thing that seems like it needs to be dealt with is the onset of that subtle dullness. Go ahead and use that technique. Use the body. Mm -hmm. And then how weary should I be about, or careful should I be about 
jumping around. I mean, I know I, you never want to just go from off to well until that's really an option, an option but mm -hmm. early on where I'm at, you don't want to just, I don't want to be going to the body and then going to the breath and when I get bored here and bored there. I, I, is, there just, is there a rule of thumb as far as number of minutes or any suggestions um, you give? In something like that, the most important thing is that, uh, you know, before you start changing your, your, making any changes in your practice in the moment, you need to be really clear on your mental state and the reason why you're doing it. It should be crystal clear what the reason for it is. And it's not just an urge or a doubt or a feeling like, well, maybe if I do this, it'll be better. You know, if it's that, you know, you, have, you, you can sense when those impulses are coming mm -hmm. from somewhere else. And you don't want to be responding to those impulses. Okay. Yeah. The only rule of thumb is if you find yourself changing what you're doing very many times in the course of one sit, that's <laughs> probably too much. Yeah. Once or twice or three times, maybe. 10 or 15 times, yeah. <laughs>